Well, this was not the most fun way to start the NBA season. We we'll say good luck to Gordon Hayward and his rehabilitation process, and all we can do now is look at this Celtics team without the guy, how they can attempt to get by, how good they are without him, and if there's any chance he could return potentially this season, just because I've seen some reports with the minimum being like four months which is about February, mid-February, potentially early March, which does give you some time to get back on the floor and hopefully, from a physical and mental standpoint, get yourself ready to go for a potential postseason run, because I think the Celtics are still good enough to be a, a playoff team in the East and all that. But who knows, maybe the reports will come out that he has to miss the entire season. Who knows? I'm, I'm speculating that even if Gordon Hayward can come back this year, we're not going to see the real Gordon Hayward, which was this previous season with the Jazz, until probably next season, which sucks. And, you know, if we could erase injuries, that would be great, but unfortunately we can't. So now we have to look at this Celtics team and how they can deal without Gordon Hayward. Well, first and foremost, Kyrie Irving has more on his plate now. He already had a decent amount on his plate given that he wants to be the leader and to his credit based on some of the things we saw last night against the Cavaliers, 10 assists, pretty efficient. He played off the ball well within Brad Stevens' offense. He was willing to give the ball up, but he also had a couple of his signature Kyrie Irving moments, three pointers with a guy contesting and he makes it in any way. He had a turnaround jumper on Derrick Rose. He also had a lot of good moments, like in the huddle there was one clip where he was being vocal and it seemed like he was telling guys where they need to be on the floor, so that was a good sign. And then when he was actually on the floor himself, there were times where he was like pointing, you know, like to Jason Tatum or whatever, like, hey, you know, you gotta stand in the corner, or pointing at whoever and being like, hey, you, stand over there. So those are good signs from Kyrie Irving. It seems that as of right now, he's buying into the leadership role. Now with Gordon Hayward out, his scoring is going to have to be just, it's going to have to be really good. I mean, I expected the dude to already put up about 25 points a game for this Celtics team anyway. Basically just do the same thing. The difference is now there is not another 20 point scorer on this team for the defense to have to care about, which means they are going to be backing off of guys like Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, Terry Rozier. Marcus Morris, and they're going to force these guys to beat them a little bit more. And I'm not saying those guys are bad offensively, like Tatum looked pretty comfortable in the second half. Jalen Brown was really good last night as a shooter and a scorer overall, his shooting being the question. He was a good corner three-point shooter last season. Hopefully he can extend that out a bit more. Of course, he's able to cut, and it seems like he can attack on a closeout pretty well. Uh, Marcus Morris, when he's back, I mean, his shooting has always been kind of shaky. Hopefully it can be enough if the defense starts leaving him a little open. Marcus Smart's three-pointer, it was good in the preseason, but who knows if it's going to actually happen in the regular season. You just got to hope that these other guys can make their open shots, and if the defense gives them a little bit of life um, to be able to take advantage of it, because they're going to be providing a lot of help defense on Kyrie Irving now. And it seems that there's only two creators on this team now, and that's Kyrie Irving and Marcus Smart. But of course, Marcus is nowhere near the score that Kyrie or Gordon Hayward are. So offense is just going to be tougher to come by for this team. Should Brad Stevens be able to draw up sets that gets them easier shots? Of course he will. But it's still a talent-driven league, and no matter how many good sets you have and forced mismatches and off-ball movement and dribble handoffs and whatever the hell else Brad Stevens can think of. You need guys who can knock down shots, and Gordon Hayward can knock down shots, and he could also create for other guys as well. So that's the first thing. They're just going to have to be really precise with their off-ball movement, and I mean, if Marcus Smart's three-pointer wants to be legit, if Jason Tatum can make an instant impact, I mean, 14 points and 10 rebounds for a rookie is pretty damn good. He did look a little lost in the first half, looked more comfortable in the second. I think the big one being his three-point shot, which I mentioned. You get it. Now if we can talk about where the Celtics rank in the Eastern Conference. 
Well, before this, I think you could have made the argument that they would get the one seed. Not necessarily be better than the Cavaliers, but at least win the most games in the regular season. And then probably lose to Cleveland in the conference finals. Now with this, they might be competing with Toronto and Washington to see who are the second, third, and fourth best teams in the Eastern Conference. I would say in that situation, like I think John Wall's a better player than Kyrie. Ultimately, I think Kyrie is a better player than Kyle Lowry. A lot of that being because Lowry has not been good in the playoffs. And if the Celtics end up getting to the second round, which I assume they can still do, then we're asking if Kyrie can win them a series against the Wizards or win them a series against Toronto because even if Gordon Hayward's back, which is an unknown, you have to assume he's not going to be himself at that point. I mean, I've seen Kyrie Irving have better playoff series than Kyle Lowry. I've, and then John Wall against the Celtics. I mean, as the series went along in round two, he did get a little bit worse. A lot of that being because the Wizards just asked him to do a lot for them. So he got a little bit winded towards the end there. I mean, I think I would give Kyrie Irving a chance in a seven-game series against John Wall. I think it's a pretty even matchup. Of course, something like home court advantage could end up making a big difference in that sort of a series, which is why the seeding is kind of important here. Do I think the Celtics can still muster 48, 49 wins if Gordon Hayward's gone for the entire year? Yes, because... I mean, you still have Al Horford, whose defense and shooting and playmaking is... Still really solid for an NBA center. Like last night against the Cavs, he didn't make any of his threes, but he also had five assists. So, I mean, he's going to be helping their offense out, whether that's just as a role guy, when he does grab rebounds, getting out in transition, and allowing them to get their offense going early. I mean, they use Horford really well. Stevens knows how to use him, and I think he can have a really good partnership with Kyrie Irving. Ultimately, I think a lot of this just comes down to where Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are right now. If those two are able to attack on closeouts, and Tatum had a couple of closeout attacks last night. Remember, I remember one specifically where he went with his left hand from the three-point line to the basket. Um, if Jalen Brown can do that type of stuff... If they both can be decent enough on their outside jumpers when the defense provides help. And defensively as well, because Gordon Hayward's a good defensive player. If they can just switch and whatever defensive scheme they want to run, if those two can do it, then okay. I mean, Jalen was good defensively last season, and Jason Tatum's defense in the preseason was really solid. He seemed like he really knew where to be and... Seems like he has a good defensive frame as well. Now, last night against Cleveland, there were times when the Celtics switching defense actually got them in trouble, where Kyrie Irving would end up on Kevin Love or whatever. So you can't switch every single thing ever. But, you know, they also had moments where they did a good job of, like, switching and then immediately unswitching, if you will, where, like, I don't know, Kyrie Irving and Jalen Brown would be involved and then... They would find a way to get Jalen back onto LeBron or something. So, I mean, they're a smart team. I think they can figure it out. I think they can still get to somewhere between 46 and like 49 wins, I guess. Based on everything I'm seeing online, it seems bare minimum is going to be four to five months. Even if he does come back at that time, it's not going to give him too much time to really get ready for the playoffs. Uh, but if he was good to go, then yeah, I'm, I'm looking at... The Celtics being better than Washington and Toronto, but there's a bit of unknown, but there you go.